Hello, and welcome to Essential Alchemy. Alchemy is defined as the power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. My hope is that the information in this podcast can help you transform your mood, your energy, physical health, or even connect some dots to help you shift your mental or emotional state. I'm your host, Jody Cohen, a best selling author, award winning journalist, functional practitioner, lifelong learner, and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils, a company that sells proprietary blends of high quality organic or wildcrafted essential oil remedies designed to help you return to your ideal mental, physical, and emotional state. You can find out more about me and my company at vibrantblueoils.com. And with that, let's get started with today's episode. Hello, I am Jody Cohen, your host, and I'm so excited to be joined today by not only one of my dear friends, but one of the practitioners that I see because she is the best. Dr. Kim Traeger is known for patients' transformational healing. She uses her vast, very vast educational background and years of experience to simultaneously heal mind, body, and spirit. Dr. Kim is a graduate of the University of Kansas and Logan University, St. Louis. She holds advanced certifications in applied kinesiology, activator method, and oral fascial myotherapy. Uh, She's a licensed yoga instructor and personal trainer. As a structural and energetic practitioner, she uncovers the causes of acute and chronic pain, body and brain lethargy, as well as finding optimum ways to balance the parasympathetic nervous system. Dr. Kim is a noted speaker, author, and educator. Welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your podcast, Jody. And it's so good to see you again. It's so good to see you. And I'm so excited to delve into the whole world of like fascia, lymph, the vagus nerve. So For anyone who's listening who is not yet uh, fully versed in fascia, can you give kind of an overview of of what it is and what it does? Absolutely. Fascia is essentially the three-dimensional connective tissue that surrounds not only every nerve, vein, artery, organ, but it also surrounds every cell in our being. So it is essentially the spider web that makes us up. I heard Tom Myers once say that if there was a way to get rid of the fascia, we would simply fall to the floor and be bones and mush. However, because the fascia gives us our form, our shape, and allows us to move, If we had an ability to remove everything except for the fascia, you would still recognize that person and see them in the same position, which I think it just helps uh, make it more real. No, I agree with you. And it's so interesting because it plays such a significant structural role, but it also plays the issues or our tissues. It stores the emotions. Can you speak to that a little bit and kind of what you've seen in practice? Right. So because the fascia, it well, of course, m- many people will recognize some of the, the parts of fascia. People take collagen because that's the main protein that makes up the fascia. And then there's elastin that allows us to jump and have stretch in our system. However, there's something that's getting more attention lately now that fascia is not just connective tissue, but it's now a new system. And that's the extracellular matrix. And that's where they feel a lot of the magic happens. So this is a fluid gel substance that is around the molecules in the fascia and where that's where we can make changes. That's where we can make changes in our posture. That's where they feel we It's believed we hold traumas, stuck emotions. And so by working with the fascia, we can work with these emotions and the trauma and move through it and move beyond it. And I feel that because the diaphragm is one part of really key fascia, I talk about breath a lot. And 
I think a lot of our trauma is held when we gasp or we hold our breath. Yes. Yes. And I've wondered about that. We can talk about kind of where we unpack the trauma, but as I've been kind of trying to release the fascia in the back of my heart, I almost feel like it gives my diaphragm more room. Absolutely. In fact, there are different myofascial lines. I mean, now that we look at it as a system and the muscles, there we go. There's the superficial front line. We can even zone in on that. So the superficial front line is one of many movement lines made up of tendons and muscle. And this is the front line and it actually begins at the top of the toes, goes up the front of the body, includes the abdominal muscles, some of the breathing muscles here, the costal sternal muscles, and the what we call an accessory breathing muscle, which is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this superficial front line is what we sometimes call the protection or the myofascial line that wants to help us guard, stay safe because we use it to contract. We also use it for sitting a lot. However, yeah. uh, anyone, you know, if you're feeling fearful or uh, just not safe, you're going to protect your heart and knowing that the spine is going to be a stronger, you're not going to feel as vulnerable. However, it's interesting because when we look at and our electromagnetic signature of every organ and in Ayurvedic or yoga, they call that the aura that extends in all directions around us. So that's interesting that you mentioned the back body. So we also have a superficial back line that starts at the bottoms of the feet, goes up the back line. It's those sacral spinatus muscles, the paraspinal muscles, rhomboids, the back neck extensors, and it doesn't stop at the skull. It continues right to the brow line, right to where the eyebrows are. So that's all part of the superficial back line. And um, the um, and recently there has been a lot of focus on looking, connecting this new system of fascia, sort of this Western viewpoint of scientifically looking at that and reviewing ancient Eastern medicine, particularly Chinese meridians. So if you can show the next slide that I brought up, uh, you can see where the superficial front line really goes right along with the stomach meridian. Superficial front line is on both legs and right up. And the stomach meridian, there's a right and a left. So I have pointed out here stomach 36, which is a very powerful point for both the fascia in the leg line and the stomach meridian. It's uh, considered a very grounding, stabilizing point, And it's right between the upper fibula and tibia. You can see here on the slide, the things that it's supposed to help with not only um, knee pain, but asthma. Remember I talked about the the sternocleidomastoid muscle and how it's an ex accessory breathing muscle, but also with energy and immunity. So this is a great point. You and I both love essential oils. This is a great point to apply essential oils and you're layering. I knee so that people can see. So that yes. so yes. help, help find so it. If you find the upper part of your shin and you move to the outside, you'll find a little dip between those two bones, those two vertical bones, the shin and the fibula. And it's right in there. Below the knee? Below, yes, right there. You're right on it. Okay. Just so people Perfect. can see. So when you use an oil in that area, you are doing Chinese medicine, especially on stomach meridians. So we suggest doing it right and left. You're addressing the fascia in that point, the same way a needle would, acupressure's just as effective, and you're getting the essential oils on the system. So it's like we're layering therapies. And I just find that that's so beneficial when I'm working with patients. 
I'm sharing it with them as well as showing them how it's done. And then uh, the next slide. Before we, um, this, I just want to, the yellow line that goes all the way up, is that kind of all of the meridians that it, that it affects? So the organs that that line goes through? So th that is actually, yes, the stomach meridian. Okay. So stomach meridian, if we think of what stomach is, you know, it's digesting our food. Stomach meridian actually begins on the cheekbone, right under the pupil of the eye. And you can see on that one picture of the face, it comes down along the jawline. Okay. okay. And then it kind of shoots up right up here to the hairline. Okay. We're still in front of the ear. And then it comes down to right at that SCM where we have lymph nodes. Oh, okay. Right in the middle there. And then right above the clavicle, we're talking about the terminus of the lymph. You've right. got Kelly Kennedy. That's a great podcast that you did with her. Uh, she's a mutual friend of ours and she's the lymph queen, right? She's the lymph queen. And I guess I'm the vagus nerve queen and you're the fascia yeah. queen. But we all, it's almost like good fairies. We all work together because absolutely the fascia and the vagus nerve are all correlated. And, and absolutely. Around the neck. And you can see where how this stomach meridian right. is kind of parts of it overlap with the vagus nerve because then we come down here where we want to wake this up so it can go to the armpit and right. the axillary nodes. But it comes down where? Along the heart and the lungs to the stomach. Remember, it's on both sides. Then there, the points are not as important going further down until we get to stomach 36, right there on the outside of the upper shin and then down to the foot. So when we look at the meridian as a whole and we think about what stomach meridian does what what our actual physical stomach does because chinese medicine is a little bit about the organ and a lot about the emotions right we know that working with this point working with some oils that would be promoting digestion such as fennel or ginger or peppermint are going to help especially right. you know right there at stomach 36 However, it's also going to help us digest new information. Yes. yes. New emotions break because that's what the stomach does. It breaks down big, complex proteins and allows it to be digested and moved on. So we can take what we need and get rid of what we don't need. So I love the stomach meridian and everything it implies. Well, and especially for people who are like anxious or overwhelmed, like this is a great point. I would probably put parasympathetic there because it's stimulatory. Do you have other suggestions? Absolutely. I, I love the parasympathetic blend because I always have them putting it like you suggest behind the ears. Yeah. Down along the SCM. I yeah. even have them take it right below the collarbone as well. And of course, with you, I, I know the benefits of breathing, inhaling the aromatic molecules of an essential oil, but I agree, get it on the skin in a safe, diluted way so that it can get in to the fascia, get into the bloodstream. It's going to make changes. Yes. No, absolutely. This is great. I love these acupuncture points. The next slide, you, you have them side by side. And remember the slide is only showing stomach meridian on one side, but it's on both sides, just like the myofascial line is on both sides. And then the last slide, and then we can go back to being next to each other. So the next one, I like to use bergamot for the emotional part of stomach meridian, simply because bergamot helps to reduce the cortisol. So it's helping parasympathetic. And all of the citrus oils bring about a happiness factor because when stomach meridian is out of balance, because it is part of earth element, we can have a feeling of not being supported, nurtured, heard, 
we're not feeling safe and we tend to then worry, feel stuck, not feel grounded. And so I find that citrus oils can really help with that. Although sometimes if you're not feeling grounded, something like vetiver is great for that grounding element. Yes. I mean, it's funny. I often say that what you apply is less important than where you apply. And so I love showing people the actual reflex points because I agree. I think that it gives kind of a systemic impact. And and going back to what you were saying about the area, the, the feelings in the back of the heart, I've just been thinking about that. and, And I love that because The oils that I find with my patients, at least that help balance and strengthen muscles along the back line, the superficial back line, are those that are more woodsy. Yeah. Cedar wood, cypress. Think of the spine like a tree. We were talking about that before we started the podcast. We want that strength and flexibility. We want to feel grounded nurtured and growing. Well, that's so, the beauty of blends is you can take a vetiver, which is very grounding. And yes. we were talking about a friend of mine was saying, you know, that the willow tree, like they're flexible, they're not rigid. Whereas, you know, the fur is more solid. And so you can kind of combine that solidity with that, the cypress, the, the rigidity, the fluidity. Connection, get that beautiful partnership of those oils. Absolutely. Our nervous system, our fascial system, lymph is so complex. It's going to figure it all out and take advantage of all of them. And I totally agree with you. I love being specific about where I put the oils. So now that you know that your back line, that the back of your heart is part of, you could put those oils on the bottom of your feet. If it was a combination that you didn't want to walk out in the world with, although I'm wearing oils all the time, or you could put it on the back of your neck because the back of your heart might not be an area that would be as easy to reach, but just knowing that it's part of that fascia line. We now have the, the roller bottles that you can much more oh, easily apply. <laughs> Kelly is obsessed with putting the heart blend on the front and the fascia blend on the back. Oh, and I, I like feel like it's this interesting, and we can speak more about the fascia because fascia massage is so delicate and so gentle. It's unfortunate. It's so important for health, but it's really hard to do it. You can't do it to yourself. And it's hard to find someone as amazing as you. So can we oh, thank you. About- and now are, now are you talking about the massage for lymphatics? Well, fa- both. It's hard to get yeah. lymphatic massage. It's hard to get fascia massage. Yeah. It's hard to relax the vagus nerve. Like this is where obviously nothing is a replacement for you, but it's an adjunct and, and just being able for people who might not live in an area where you're accessible or for people who maybe they're able to get an appointment once a week. And then the rest of the week, they want to make sure that they're supporting their body. Exactly. Some of the new research, and I think that we might've talked about it Three things that actually they've shown will make a change with fascia, as well as, of course, movement is the best. That's why stretching and safe movement is always good. Compression. So that's like the massage and you can do it at deep at a superficial level for the superficial fascia, a little deeper for the deeper fascia and decompression. So usually decompression is going to be the cupping. Yeah. Chinese cupping where they apply the cups and it lifts the skin. However, I will sometimes just teach my patients how they can lift and roll the skin. And I usually will have them put the oil on first And because fascia is a network that moves in all directions, we don't have to worry necessarily about the myofascial line. We can just go, you know, that so they don't have to be in front of a anatomy text or anything. Don't worry about it. Just pick it up and do a rolling technique, which is actually, that's part of Chinese medicine. They have these different tween different rolling techniques. 
And then another one is pivoting. So pivot, if I have somebody uh, wanting to release fascia on the back, I'll teach them how to safely lean against the wall. Of course, have your feet out so you're not going to fall and bend the knees slightly. And have, I like to use the yoga tune-up balls, but there are the melt balls. They're, they're a little stickier and have a little more give than a tennis ball back there. And whereas we used to teach primarily bend your knees so you're rolling your back on this ball, the new information that we have about the fascial research is that we pretend one arm is heavier and then the other. So we're actually pivoting the oh. tissue over the ball, over that point. So if I'm working on a patient, a lot of new fascial research has we put the hand down and we're moving the, the tissue. I love reading and staying up to date with what's going on. So now you and everyone who listens to this will be like, okay, I'm going to do some rolling. I'm going to get an appointment for some cupping. I'm going to put my oils on first and uh, really get the benefit. One of the things that I, one question that I get a lot is kind of getting back to the specific points. Like we tell people to put the parasympathetic on the vagus nerve. Yes. The lady teaches that you want to um, use the oils on the clavicles first and then along the neck. In terms of fascia and kind of sequencing and, and key points, are there any key points that you think are really important to use the oils on? And is there any critical order, like especially if you're using it in combination with parasympathetic for vagus nerve stimulation and lymph for lymphatic drainage? We can never go wrong with the bottom of the feet. All of the fascial lines, except for the ones in the arms, start at the feet. Okay. And so to put them on the feet, the, the arches, the bottoms, the tops, we're going to get all of those fascial lines. In fact, that's what I'm often doing in the evening. I'm just massaging my feet thoroughly with oils that are pertinent, usually the ones that are going to help me sleep. So I'm a big fan of lavender and, and vetiver. So you can't go wrong with the feet. And because we have so much going on in the neck and any oils we put on the neck, we're naturally going to breathe in and get that, those, those uh, aromatic molecules are going to go to the amygdala. It's going to make send messages to the hypothalamus, making changes in our perception of our world, our emotions, and how we're thinking actually. So I feel like to put them on the neck, which is sometimes safer, you know, than the delicate uh, tissues of the face. There are only a few I'll use on the face itself. I think that's great because we've got so many lymph nodes here yes. and we've got a lot of fascial lines and there's so much that, you know, that is going on uh, here with the jaw. It just really helps with that. And it's kind of the connection, the bridge between our brain and our heart. Yes. I, exactly. see I, I give my neck a lot of love. I try to give my neck a lot of love. Is there any sequence? Like, should they do the back of the neck first or does it matter in terms of unpacking? When it comes to the neck, I will usually do it in a lymphatic flow. Okay. So I'm starting right above the collarbone. Yeah, just walk us through that. So... I think that you and Kelly and I are all on the same page that we want to wake up, even though the points right uh, above the collarbone is called the terminus. If you think of a circle, the terminus, meaning the end, is also the beginning. That's kind of like a circle. So we're waking that up. That's kind of a message to the body. Okay, we're going to start this flow. And I like to make sure that I don't have any uh, congestion at the major traffic areas. And that's going to be the lymph nodes here. So I'm going to move that out below the collarbone towards the armpits. I'm going to get in and wake up the armpits. And it doesn't take a lot of deep pressure. This is all pretty superficial because 70% of our lymph is right under the skin. Then I have that all prepared. Then I come back up and I 
I like to do one at a time so I can really focus on it. I take my fingertips right behind my earlobe and I just bring them down to right above my sternum, right to that sternal notch. Diagonally? Light. I'll do like, I don't know, 10, 15 times on each side. Get right. that ready. I do the Spock fingers. All right. I learned this from Kelly. Do the Spock fingers and put two of the fingers in front of my ear and two behind and do like these circles. I'm going up and down. It's just very efficient that way. Yeah. I love it. With I kids, I, 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 because we have so many lymph nodes in front of the ear, under the ear, behind the ear. So I'm waking that up. And then I go back. I'm not going to leave any. Uh, fingers, does it matter if you go uh, forward or back? Nope. Doesn't really matter. I do a little bit of both. I bring it back down. I'll send it over. Then I'll bring the back of the neck forward. Because especially with thyroid issues, we tend to ha sometimes we'll have a little hump right back there at there's a, going to be a natural skeletal hump at C7 T1 that's normal, but we don't want any extra lymph there. So it's not simply the neck, but I'm taking my fingertips down a little bit, bringing them around, which is the flow of the lymph. I want to make sure that goes to the armpits. Then I can always get my gua sha stone out. I can do my face where I start in the center and I'm taking everything to the ears and then down. Okay. Yeah. And, and for me, I, I love using rose. Yes. Or diluted rose or lavender geranium. Those all like, sound great. Yes. And I, and I agree with you. Be careful what you put on your face. Rose is fine. Frankincense is fine. Some things, you know, are a little spicy. Sure. Never put oregano on your face. Yeah. I'm you know, hot oil. If you're working with a practitioner, oregano can be fabulous, but it's not a dear <laughs> oil. Never for the face. Yeah. So I agree. I totally agree with you, Jody. that then the neck is really just a key area. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. And yeah, for everything, for heart coherence, heart brain coherence, for the gut, the body. Is there anything kind of on this topic that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share? You know, I mentioned at the beginning about our electromagnetic signatures that we now have machinery that's able to measure that. And as it turns out, every organ has a signature that has an electric component and a magnetic component. So our heart has the largest signature. It extends out up to six feet in all directions. The brain is second, makes sense. But I like kind of like the fact that the heart has the biggest signature. So there's a, a, a beautiful technique that I love having my patients at the end of a, a session where we've worked with acupressure points and oils and emotions and some movement with them. I'll bring in some modified yoga poses and I have them simply lying down or sitting up with one hand over the heart and one hand over the forehead. And that's where our emotional points are and acupressure for our thoughts. And I have them actually not think of the past or the trauma that they're undergoing, but to think back to a time when they felt strong and confident, when they knew they were enough and they were love and connected with the universe. And to breathe that in a slow diaphragmatic breath, making that connection between the gratitude and the deep happiness of the heart and that positive memory of the thought is incredibly powerful. It's some of the heart math stop yeah. information, but I just kind of personalized it and added oils and closed a lot of my, my times with that, with patients. And I'm always feeling, I'm always feeling very touched too. I'm very, really honored that I got to be part of that whole healing process there. Well, and thank you for sharing your brilliance with us today. 
Can you share how people can find you, please? Of course. First of all, thank you, Jody, for inviting me. It's so good to see you. And if anyone wants to work with me online or come and see me in Chicago area, you can uh, find out more about what I do and what I offer at drkimtrager.com. You can contact me at drkim at drkimtrager.com. And I'm also on Instagram. So there you go. Dr. Yes. Kim Trigger. Well, thank you. We're so grateful to you and for constantly using my oils and giving me great feedback and everyone who's listening, great ideas on how they can do self-lymph massage and a lot of healing. Thank you, Jody, And thank you for all the brilliant work that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this podcast empowered you with some useful information and takeaways. If you liked this episode, please consider sharing a positive review or subscribing. I would also love to offer you my free parasympathetic toolkit as a gift just for listening. It will teach you how to activate the most important nerve in your body to turn on your ability to heal. This free toolkit includes a checklist, a video, and a detailed guide. If this podcast prompted any questions, you can always find answers at my blog at vibrantblueoils.com or my book, Essential Oils to Boost the Brain and Heal the Body. Until next time, wishing you vibrant health.